Today I'm finding out more about accessible holidays, exactly where you might go if you use a wheelchair or mobility scooter, are a slow walker or suffer from dementia. These are holidays where you can go for a change of scene and hopefully all your needs should be taken care of. Let's find out more. First off today is Lucy Harding of Dementia Adventure, a community interest company. Now, Lucy, can you give me a little bit of background on Dementia Adventure, how and why the company started, what it aims to do? Um, Hello, Jenny. Um, Well, my husband and I started Dementia Adventure um, five years ago, hoping to use our combined skills in adventure travel and dementia innovation for good. Um, Neil's worked with people with dementia since um, he left university, um, except for a little break where he worked for Explore, the travel company, and that's where he met me. And I was working as an operations manager at the time, having done seven years as a tour leader. So um, I've got an enormous amount of experience in organising people's holidays for them. And, um, uh, you know, so by the time I left Explore, I'd been there for 12 years um, Mm. when I left to have our family and to help Neil set up Dementia Adventure. Um, We've always been, uh, Neil's lived with dementia kind of all of his life. His grandparents, three of his grandparents had it from when he was very young. And um, he he did psychology at university and really got into kind of um, making things better for people with dementia. He's very frustrated that, that a diagnosis seemed to mean the end of all things fun and that we wanted to, uh, you know, give people the message that actually if they keep active, if they keep doing uh, things out in the community, that they can have a much um, better quality of life and that it can. There is some evidence to suggest that people can actually delay the progress of the d- disease if they remain active. So that's really what we're um, aiming to do, is give people a better quality of life through enabling access to the outdoors um, and, uh, you know, giving people the social, emotional and physical benefits of exercise which are evident in all of us. Fantastic. Well, you know, fairly good and big, important aims. Now, I'm obviously interested in the holidays and the days out aspect of your work. Mm -hmm. So you've a little bit answered this, but, you know, one of the questions always is, Do people with dementia really need and benefit from a holiday? Well, we all like to see a beautiful view. We all like to feel the wind in our hair and the sun on our face. We all like to maybe walk along the beach and feel the sand between our toes, maybe even go for a swim, um, have a laugh with friends and family, eat good food, stay in a lovely place. Um, These are all things that everybody likes, and why should somebody with a diagnosis of dementia like it any less than everybody else? And especially if they've enjoyed holidays all of their lives up till that point. Um, You know, it's it's really important for both the person living with dementia and their carer to get away for a break and a change of scene, and, um, and where both of them can be looked after. Now, that is a really important thing, isn't it? I think the carers quite often suffer um, and, you know, bear the burden alone, don't they? Um, yeah, I mean, most of the thing, uh, one of the most wonderful bits of feedback that I get from carers particularly is that they didn't have to think um, right. when they're on a holiday with me. So that they, they you know, the itinerary is taken care of, that, you know, they don't have to make a decision about, you know, where to go, how the directions, um, make, you know, what to eat. Mm. Yeah, it's <laughs> all know, sorted. It's all sorted for them. They can just sort of tag along and, 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 and they can sort of abdicate responsibility for a little while and, and feel very much relieved of, of the sort of responsibility that they take through the rest of their lives. Is it a great worry taking a proper rest? rest. We like (laughs) that. Is it a great worry taking somebody to a new place without their routine and their structure? Well, the way that we base it is around um, supporting each pair of people. So there's a person living with dementia, their main carer or a son or a daughter, somebody who knows them well, who are then supported by a member of the Dementia Adventure team. Now, we have a fantastic adventure leader who works for us full time, and we also have a bank of volunteers who are amazing people who are you know, individually skilled in their own field to give their time for, for free to make these holidays a bit more affordable. Um, and they, they, this one person will you know, be your friend and your extra pair of hands for the whole holiday so that, you know, we can give as much support as we possibly can. And, of course, I put a great deal of work into planning and looking at the venues that we take people to and trying, you know, to plan the itinerary so that we're not doing too much Mm. and so that each uh, of the things that we do is, like, dementia-friendly or as as friendly as it can be, you know, gentle 
activities, not trying to pack too much in. And and so we, we help people to sort of get used to the place that they've been brought to, right. you know, and uh, and give them what they need, make sure that they eat at regular intervals, sure. they have plenty to, you know, plenty of cups of tea and and, uh, and fresh air and exercise as well and sort of a, a gently cajoled into doing things rather than kind of, you know... It's not a military operation. Yes, yes, boot camp it <laughs> It's aid. a holiday. It's a know. holiday. So what actual kind of holidays are on offer? I mean, can you give me some examples? I know that there's sailing, for example, which made me think my word. Oh, yeah, well, the sailing's been a fantastic project. We've worked with a, a local charity called the Sea Change Sailing Trust, and I think we've done three of them now uh, where we've had... Um, three or four couples with dementia on this boat with uh, our team and volunteers and, and also the, the captain and the first mate um, who actually know how to sail a boat properly. Good, good. <laughs> and it's this huge, great Thames sailing barge with cabins and a really lovely kitchen and dining room and sort of comfy sofa area with a coal-burning stove, so it's really nice and cosy. And, and we've um, taken sort of a five-day trip around around the Essex estuary, you know, same mm-hmm. from Malden. And and people have really worked together as a team to sort of sail this boat, and it's really been fantastic. And particularly if people have been sailors before, it's something that doesn't leave you. Sure. You know, it, it's like this sort of physical memory that, mm. that comes back, mm. even though they can't remember what day of the week it is or, or you know. It's amazing to see the effect that it has on people, that this sort of, you know, the fresh air, the exercise and doing something that they love. Um, mm. I've seen people become much more fluent, um, you know, smile on their face. Really brilliant experience. And that's not the only thing we've done. We've well, done do lots, tell, lots of, do walk, tell. Walking holidays in the Lake District. Um, we took uh, four, four couples to the Isle of Wight in September. And, you know, we organised a, a visit to the, the Botanical Gardens, a big walk across the countryside. We stayed on a farm that was really lovely. We did a uh, steam paddle, paddle steamer boat mm. trip around mm. the island, which was really fantastic. And we also visited Osborne House. Okay, and and had a swim in the Solent from the from the Queen's Beach. <laughs> ah, yes, that's just recently opened, hasn't it? Oh, it was absolutely lovely, and and again, people had fantastic feedback at the end of the week. We stayed in this lovely farm, as I say, the, the hosts were really lovely and understanding. We had the whole place to ourselves, right. and and um, you know, people were very comfortable. In fact, the woman, uh, one of the women, one of the carers who was on the trip, has written an article for her local Alzheimer's Association magazine, and and you know, in praise of this holiday so oh great um, we can look that up and sort of put it up on yeah. our book page and, and, and publicize that so it's really that's so lovely. so i would come to you and say right you know i'm one of a couple mm. and we would like this kind of holiday and you would help us get it together yes absolutely um, I organise several off-the-shelf kind of holidays right. with my plan already, and I give people a, a price and everything, and then mm. they can buy a place on that holiday. Right. But also, and equally very importantly, we have a bespoke service where we have a, um, a seven-seater um, Volkswagen Caravelle, one of these mm. luxury people carriers, fantastic vehicle uh, that we've just purchased, and um, my venture leader, and he can organise to take you wherever you want to go. Right. So if you have a favourite seaside resort, a favourite mountain that you have always gone up every summer, mm. um, and you want to go back there with support to enable you to do it, then we can make that happen very, very easily. Lucy, you sound like a fairy godmother. That's <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Very sweet of you, thank you. Now, you know, you're talking about the careful planning and the risk management and everything. I mean, it must be massive. It is quite a long-winded process, um, but uh, we um, first of all have a conversation with people about exactly how the dementia affects their daily life and, and what sort of adaptations they would need in order to feel happy and comfortable. Mm. And before we actually decide, sort of, you know, how to organise it, where to go, um, you know, where you want to go. Sure. You know? so, so it's a detailed conversation with people, and then once we've decided on the itinerary and designed it around people's needs, wants, and desires. Mm. Then um, we have a detailed risk-benefit analysis form okay. that we fill in. So cause there's lots of fear around risk. Sure. Um, and, and whereas, you know, even with even, you know, things that are perceived as really risky, like whitewater rafting, which we incidentally did do this <laughs> summer for a lady who wanted to do it, um, you know, they, these companies have very good safety records. Hardly yes. ever do they have an accident or anything mm. go wrong. 
Um, and people accept that degree of risk because it's worth it. For they the want to, and the, yeah. And the, the, the thrill of yeah. doing it, the adrenaline rush can be really kind of, you know, beneficial. And this um, holiday went absolutely brilliantly. You can see the film of it on our YouTube um, channel. Okay. Um, but so, I mean, and, and when you look at the benefits of all of this kind of activity, they're almost guaranteed, 100% likely to happen. You are likely yeah, yeah. to feel the benefit from this. So, you know, we believe that people should be entitled and, and enabled to mm. continue to take the risks that they want to take because they're worth it. Good. That's, that's, <laughs> that's said Lucy Harding. So what about... So that's what we believe. <laughs> what about funding, Lucy? Because I know that people can be in slightly more straitened circumstances if somebody's given up work to care for a, a spouse or whatever. Yeah, well, this is, this is something that we're really... Um, uh, is a constant challenge. Um, recently, we've got funding from the People's Postcode Lottery, which is absolutely fantastic, which enables the, uh, the organisation to exist as a resource for people and also people can um you know costs are arrived at on a very individual basis depending mm. on where you want to go and what time of year and how you want to stay uh, and all that sort of thing so um people can actually use their personal budgets or um their respite money or even appeal to their gp for uh, access to their respite funding so there are ways, and there might be local charities that people could apply to that give them grant funding to pay for these holidays. So um, I would encourage people to get in touch with us, even if they you know, don't have an awful lot of money hanging around, because there are ways that we can explore how to pay for them, which means that they can still get away on one of these holidays. Brilliant. Now, on a slightly less ambitious level, but equally important, are your park and your woodland walks. Tell me a little bit about these and what the benefits are from them. Well, um, our, wood, our walking outdoors um, is widely regarded as a brilliant way of enhancing your health. Um, there's lots of evidence which links regular walking to a better quality of life, living for, pe- yeah, for people for everybody Mm. and especially for people with dementia so we always see people go home with a smile on their face and um, staff in care settings quite often bring people out of care settings on on our park walks and always report to us that people have eaten better people have slept better afterwards so you know we can very much see that it's a very beneficial activity right um and and it's really um you know, popular with our local volunteers as well. People like to get out for a walk and they mm-hmm. like to support other people to get out for a walk as well. And it can be a really sort of beneficial, regular thing that people can do. And, and you know, it really is advocated by the experts in the field. You know, sure. um, John Zeisel, who's a, a prominent dementia expert from America, uh, recommends, um, he, he has an article on the Huffington Post website right. and entitled Take a Pill or Take a Walk. You know, he really sees a regular daily walk as an alternative to medication. Well, I'm with him. I mean, I am a big walker, so yeah. yes. I... Absolutely. Well, you know how beneficial it is. I do. And and it would certainly be heartbreaking for you to have to give that daily walk up. It would. So, you know, whatever we can do to help you to continue to do that walk, then we will do it. Well done. So what would you... <laughs> so, we, so, I mean, practically, on a practical level, we help local organisations to organise walks. I mean, we're a small small organisation. We're based in Essex, and we work with um, other organisations such as Fair Shares in Stroud and Vision in Redbridge. Um, we've helped them set up their local park walk service. So we've done the training and the sort of stuff around setting up the service that they need, and we hope very much to be able to do that with many more organisations into the future. I mean, I have an ambition to that everybody with a diagnosis of dementia is offered a regular park walk as a kind of post-diagnostic support follow-up, mm. you know, all over the country. Now, I mean, that might be a huge ambition, but, you know, it's not rocket science, so why not? <laughs> why not indeed? Start small and get big, my darling. That's wonderful. <laughs> What's your message? What would be your message, Lucy, to a carer looking after or living with a dementia sufferer in I, relation I, to holidays? Yeah, I would say get help. Don't try and do it alone. Um even if you don't call me, please call me. <laughs> have, a, have a chat. See what we can do, um, and, you know, to help you get away. But um, if, you, if you want to do it with your family, with your friends, then do it that way. You know, get help to do it. It's always much easier when you have support and help. Lucy, thank you so much. I mean, it sounds like a truly just wonderful organisation, extremely inspirational and thank obviously you. providing a much needed service for everybody involved. 
thank you. I'm, I'm hoping that this interview will uh, result in lots of people checking our website, which is dementiaadventure.co.uk, maybe going to our Facebook page or like or following us on Twitter. Um, you know, we have all the sort of social media things going on. We like to have um, people posting about their adventures on our Facebook page. So if you are living with dementia and you get and you still find you are able to get out, then share your pictures with us and your stories with us on our Facebook page. That'd be fantastic. Lovely. Thanks, Lucy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jenny. It's been lovely to talk to you.